Yes, sir, Joel. You sure would have been proud of me. Doggone it, there I was, standing up there in front of all them folks, and it was just a clapping and a cheering, and I'd stand up there bowing, and, and the more they'd clap and cheer and stomp, the more I'd bow. With, with, with that hat on? Oh, certainly not. Took the hat off and bowed like this. Bravo, 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 bravo. Hey, Adam, come on in and hear about my, my dream last night. Yeah, he, he was elected governor. Sure was. The whole state. Well, congratulations for bringing the territory up to statehood. That's right, it ain't a state yet. Well, it don't make no difference. It's just a dream anyhow, but it sure was a real one. You know, I I'd clap for you if you'd stop bowing long enough to help me finish cleaning out these stalls. Oh, now, Joe, you should know better than Josh around with the governor. Why, he would never stoop so low to mess around and hey. Oh, now, Adam, that's where you're wrong. See, I, I told these folks I was a man of the people. I said, why, from... Humble beginnings. I rose to great heights. And you know something, brother? You are absolutely right. Yeah! <laughs> His Honor, the human governor, Huff's Cartwright. <laughs> All right, what's going on now? <laughs> <coughs> nothing, that burn it, Paul. That gummit, they just won't take nothing serious, that's all. These boys ribbing you again. Oh, well, Puck, my dream he was the governor. Now, that, that's, that's the biggest whopper of a dream I ever heard in my life. <laughs> What's the matter with that dream? Hoss, I'd like you to do something for me. What's that, Paul? I want you to go by Jake Town's cabin. Has he moved back up there on Devil Wind Hill? No, 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 I got a letter from him, though. His uncle is staying at the cabin for a little while, and uh, he'd like one of us to go by and, you know, see that they've got everything they need. They? Yeah, his uncle finishes there with his granddaughter. Uh, a young lady by the name of uh, Amanda, I believe. Well, now, wouldn't it be more neighborly if we all went by? Yeah, I, I, I think Adam's right, Pa. You know, it gets pretty dangerous up there on Devil Wind Hill, that wind blowing one person alone. Now, Joseph, Joseph, you don't really believe that that wind could blow your brother horse away, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to have a little more faith in your brother, Joseph, just as I have faith in you. In me? I have so much faith in you that I know deep down that you are going to stay here and clean up all these stalls. <laughs> and I know that you're going to have the south fence fixed before sundown. <laughs> you see, Joseph, that is what is known as faith. That's right, Paul. Man's got enough of it. Well, he can he can move mountains with it. Should we put that tea with? Oh, you unpacked last night, Grandpa. Don't you remember? Here it is. I unpacked? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Amanda, how about making us a cup of good Boston tea? Ugh. Amanda, why, why aren't you wearing one of your dresses, darling? We are here for science, Professor Plump, not society. Hmm. Why don't you go back to Boston, darling? Grandpa, I do not want to talk about it. A pack of laughing hyenas. Ugh. Well, I'm an inventor. You, you, well, you just have to expect that. That's all. Yeah, expect people to call you a crackpot? And your own assistant to laugh in your face when one of your inventions blows up? Huh. And him marrying another girl, and... Oh, uh, Amanda, how, how's the tea coming? 
fine, Grandpa, just fine. I think I'll do a little bird watching while you're brewing. <laughs> oh, the tea, I mean, while you're brewing the tea. That's what I... My name, my name is Cartwright. I, I'm from the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa? Yeah. My, my pa sent me out here to welcome you. We don't want no welcome. <laughs> ma'am. Now go on. Just get out of here. Go on. Yes, ma'am. You, you got a powerful good argument there, ma'am. Go on. Just keep right on going. Amanda, stop it. Stop it. You'll kill me, Amanda. Just drop down, I'll catch you. Ma'am, if you'll just be quiet and calm, I'll help you. Sir, just roll right on off and I'll grab you. No, you have to speak up with Grandpa. Oh. Sir, if you'll just roll right on off, I'll grab you. Well, you don't have to shout. I'm not hard of hearing. My goodness. Don't you think I'm too big a bird? Ah, shucks, no. Just roll right on off. Come on. That's it. <laughs> it won't stop a tune you being here, Mr. Uh... Cart Cartwright. Uh, Hoss, just call me Hoss. Oh, I'm uh, Professor Phineas T. Clump. Well, I'm, I'm happy to meet you, sir. Well, thank you, thank you. I can see you've already met my charming granddaughter, Amanda. <laughs> hey, yes, sir. Charming. Come on, Grandpa, let me take you back to the cabin. You might have hurt yourself. She's always clucking over me like a mother hen, you know. What about that tea you were brewing? Perhaps our friend here would care for some of it. Grandpa, remember what... Now, listen, we are really indebted to Mr. Cartwright. Now, let's show him some of that warm hospitality of the East. That would be nice. Well, that's, that's mighty nice of you, Professor, but well, I don't want to cause you any trouble. Well, it's no trouble, my goodness. It's good to be talking to a man again. <laughs> man. No. Yeah. Oh. Now I suppose you'd be worrying about me climbing that tree for my bird watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh, why don't we why don't we move that ladder over? Say, that that's a sensational idea. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that myself? Oh, that'll be great. You have a very interesting name, horse. <laughs> Most people think it's horse, but it ain't. It's just plain horse. Oh, no, not that one. Cartwright. Oh. Are you by any chance related to Edmund Cartwright? Well, not, not that I know of. Is he, <laughs> is he a friend of yours? Well, friend? Oh. oh, that I just could have touched the hand of this genius. Or shared in the secrets of his brilliant mind. You know, the man had a this, brilliant mind. This Ed Cartwright? Yes. Oh, there are men who walk among us like giants, horse. Giants. Why, he gave priceless gifts to the world. You know. Why, you take the loom, for instance. Who else would have thought of using machines for spinning cotton? This, this Ed Cartwright? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what about his alcohol-fueled engine? There's no telling where that one will end, you know. You don't say. Oh, brilliant, man. I hope to use the Cartwright engine on one of my inventions. <laughs> you, uh, you an inventor too, Professor? Oh, inventing is my whole life, horse. Why, it's the only doorway left open for opportunity. Opportunity, huh? Hey, maybe we ought to shut the door so we can hear it knocking. <laughs> Let's see if the tea is ready. Follow me, horse. <laughs> ah, my clump mobile. <laughs> there I was, lined up between two horse-drawn carriages. <laughs> How they laughed at me. <laughs> well, Professor, this... this... Clumpmobile. It didn't have no horse at all? No, it was a completely horseless carriage. 
Yo, how, how'd it do in the race? It blew up right in their faces. Boy, I nearly scared the pants off it. Pardon me, Grandpa. Well, it, it did just about that. Anyway, we, we came out here to be away from people, you see. Yeah, yeah. Now look, uh, Professor, you ain't gonna try to get that clump mobile started again, are you? Oh, for heaven's sakes, no. That's a thing of the past. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going into space now. Grandfather, you promised. <coughs> <coughs> Why, that's the longest devil wind yet. This is the season, you know. The wind only comes up the hill twice a day. Yeah, well, uh, well, thank you a whole lot, Professor, for the tea. I, I reckon I better be heading on out. Oh, no, 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 don't leave. Why, you haven't seen my invention. But, Professor, I think I no, better be... No, listen. You are going to be one of the first to lay your eyes on the greatest gift known to mankind. This is the most important invention since the wheel. Important? The most important. I'm a modest man, Horace, but, uh, but I tell you that the future of the world is out there in that shed. And this is your opportunity to see it. You know, I can almost hear it knocking right now. Let's go, Professor. <laughs> Horse, you prepare yourself for the greatest sight since the days of Leonardo da Vinci. Who? Leonardo da Vinci, the great painter of the Mona Lisa. Oh, oh yeah. And he was also a marvelous inventor, you know. Yeah. Oh, he was centuries ahead of his time. Now, you just get ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Look! What is that contraption? Well, I, I haven't named it yet. But soon they'll take me soaring over mountains and valleys. <laughs> you mean those are... Those are your flying machine? Well, uh, they will be as soon as I can come up with some means of strapping them on, yes. Are you, uh... You sure it'll work? Well, I'm as sure as Da Vinci was. Horse, look here. See that? Man has known for hundreds of years that he could fly. All that's been needed is uh, just one courageous soul to prove it. <laughs> yeah. You mean, you mean to tell me this has been going on all this time and I didn't even know nothing about it? Well, it's, it's, it's a very simple principle. It's like uh, flying a kite. You see, the wind strikes an obstacle and it splits and it flies over and under it. And behind the object, it, well, the air pressure lessons. Besides that, nature hates a vacuum, so it rushes in to replace it. And the back end of the kite goes up, or, or in this case, the man. Yeah. I, I never thought about it. <laughs> and all you need is a hornet, huh? Well, or, or something to, to fasten them together, and on me, yes. <laughs> Professor, I got an idea. I think there's going to be another Cartwright to get into this invention business. If it's good enough for Ed Cartwright, it's good enough for Hoss Cartwright. Come on. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, what are you two doing? <laughs> horse, horse is inventing a, a, a harness here for the wings, you know. <laughs> Grandpa, you look so silly. Well, I feel silly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so silly. <laughs> Come on, <Anna. laughs> It'll never work. We can all three get in that with room left over. Uh, Ma'am, we, we, don't, we don't need all of this. See, I'll take some of that off, and when I get back to Ponderosa, I'm going to make a larret, and I can cinch it up tight, and it'll fit him as tight as it did the horse. <laughs> oh. You know, it's a new Cartwright invention. The horse Cartwright harness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm only going back to Ponderosa and get that, that lyric made. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Hoss Cartwright. Uh, 
I guess maybe I should apologize for the way I welcomed you. I mean, since you didn't turn out to be one of those laughing hyenas. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, you know, like in Boston. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll see you, ma'am. Amanda! Oh, Amanda. Here, 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 Grandpa, I'll help you. Come oh, on. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Doug, how come you're always half a jump ahead of me? Because I'm half again as smart as you are. Hey, Hoss, how about a game of checkers? No, thank you, Joe. I got a bunch of work here I got to do. All right, come on, let's have one more. All right, one more try, that's it. What are those folks like up on uh, Devil Wind Hill? Just ordinary folks, I reckon. What's the daughter like? Oh, she's about yay high and yay wide. So's the corral gate. Yeah, what's she look like? Well, she's she got brown hair. Shimmering around her shoulders, soft and sweet. No, sort of like a sort of like a school marm does it. That's what it's like, yeah. A top knot? A school marm? Well, I, I reckon the specs maybe reminds me of a school marm a little bit, too. She's awful smart. Awful smart. That does it. Your move. Sounds like a real beauty. Adam, next time you're in town, pick up the bills at the general store, will you? Right. Whew. And Larry? Yes, yeah, sorta. What for? Hornets. Pretty thin, isn't it? Oh, he's got a pretty thin horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paul, we got any kinfolk in England? Well, might have. Name Cartwright goes way back, why? Yeah, just wondering if we're any kin to that, that Edmund Cartwright. You mean the man who invented the loom? Yeah, that's no. all. He, uh, he also invented an engine that, that uses alcohol for fuel. Ain't no telling where that's gonna end. What kind of fuel you been using lately? <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking for Mr. Horse Cartwright. Oh. Miss Amanda, what's the matter? It's Grandpa. He's stuck. Stuck? In the tree. He tried without the lariat. You mean he tried to... And I can't get him down. Is there something we can do? <laughs> no, no, Paul, I'll take care of it. Come on, Miss Amanda. <laughs> Imagine trying to climb a tree without a lariat. Imagine thinking she looks like a school mom. Oh, 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 good evening, horse. It seems we're always meeting at opposite ends of a tree. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it sure does at that. I, I thought she was going to wait for the lariat. What's that? I say I thought she was going to wait for the lariat. Oh, I just wanted to make a small flight from the lower branches, <laughs> the tree. <laughs> uh, look, Professor, can, can you get your arms out of them wings? No, oh, I'm afraid not. See, I strain my latissimus dorsi. You what? My latissimus dorsi, I strained it. Maybe I ought to go get a doctor, huh? Oh, no, that, that won't be necessary, horse, no. You see, it's just that I can't lift that arm, but it, it'll be all right, it'll heal. I, I wrenched a muscle, you see. We'll have to do it another way. Well, be careful with him, horse. Yes, sir. Here. Oh, by the way, horse, you know, your idea for the harness, smashing success. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it looks a little smashed. <laughs> well, what about the wings? Oh, they're just a few feathers missing, that's all. You see, it's my own wing that I'm worried about, this one here, you yeah. see. 
Lift that other arm, Professor. Oh, I can't. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, I can't. It... How long does it take that, that latimus or thing or whatever you call it, how long does it take that to heal? Oh, about a month, maybe more. I'll miss that devil win for sure, you know. It only lasts another week. You mean we can't do it? Well, I can. I can. You know, horse, I was just thinking. You're not going to see man in flight after all. <laughs> Too bad, of course, unless someone else decides to do the honors, you know. Yeah. Dad, Bernard, that's too bad, Professor. Well, I'll do it, Grandpa. <laughs> Miss Amanda, you're a girl. Well, what's that got to do with it? Professor, will you tell her that this is a man's job? All right, what man will do it? Me! Me? Have you seen Hoss? Oh, you mean our brother, the one that uh, wants to be taken seriously? Well, who else do I mean? He's out there. Hmm. What's he doing? He's flying a kite. Hold this phone with me. What is it? It's a book Hoss was reading. Birds of the Western World. Hey, what's, uh, what's happening, Hoss? Oh, nothing. Dad, Barney. Joe, you know anything about these things? I've been running 40 miles of this this morning. Ain't got it over knee high. Hmm. Oh, that's a, that's a real nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's, it's a well-made one. Great day for flying. Yeah. Joe, hmm? if I was to tell you something, a big secret, would you, would you promise not to laugh at me? Horse, have I ever? You know I won't laugh. What is it? Well, you know that Professor Clump up on Devil Wind Hill? Well, he's got this invention, see? It's going to change the world, Joe, the whole dang world. And I'm going to fly it. Fly, fly it? Yeah, that's what I'm doing out here this kite. I'm trying to feel out the wind a little bit. I'm going to fly, Joe, like a bird. And then I'm going to be one of them, one of them giants among men. <laughs> What's a dead bird, funny? Put salt on my tail? Now, Joe, I mean it. That burn it. Stop it. All right, all right. I'm just joshing you. All right, I am. Right. Now, you say it. You say, horse is going to be a giant among men. Now, say it. Uh, horse is going to be a giant bird. <laughs> a giant among men. Now, say it. Oh, you 300-pound robin. All Fantastic. right. Come on. No. Hey, no, no. Under the water, Trump. Not the... Oh, you're going to say it. Oh, come now, on. One last time. You're going to say it? Say, horse is going to be a giant among men. Now, say it. Probably want a cracker? <laughs> hey, Joe. Oh. Oh. Now, you're going to say it? Uh, you gonna say it? Oh, cool! Well. Oh, hi, Paul. May I be so bold as to ask what? This is all about. Well, Dad, burn it, Paul. I'm just trying to teach him to take me a little more seriously. That's all. Oh, I see. And at the risk of sounding perhaps a little foolish, does, does this belong to you? Well, perhaps. Just perhaps, if you were to act 
a little more seriously, maybe people would take you a little more seriously. Buck! Come on. Buck! Buck! Forget it. Burn it. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. Can't understand it. He, he knows we're testing today. Oh, Grandpa, you don't suppose he's like the others? I mean, only humoring us? Oh, <laughs> oh, don't worry. He'll be here, darling. He promised, didn't he? Oh, do I look all right? Oh, you look just... Why, Amanda, darling, what, what have you done to yourself? Well, I've gone and decided to look like a girl. Oh. I mean, pretty. Is it all right? All right. <laughs> Goodness me. All right. <laughs> Why, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh, Grandpa. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You look just like your mother used to, you know? <laughs> uh, is it horse? Oh, he's so big and brave. Grandpa, he's just wonderful. Well, the world is full of wonderful men. If you'll just look around, big, brave, wonderful men. <laughs> but I guess you've met enough of the other kind, huh? Yeah. But that's all over now, is it? No more suspicion? No more distress? And no more going after strangers with a gun, either. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, Professor. Hello, Hawes. Miss Amanda. Howdy. Uh, this here is my little brother, Joe. He's a Cartwright, too. Ain't you, Joe? Uh, yeah, that, that's what my daddy calls me. This was supposed to be a secret. Amanda, aren't you going to say hello to the new guest? Oh, uh... How do you do, little Joe? I don't believe we ever met formally. Well, ma'am, I, I don't believe we have. Hi. <laughs> Horse, uh, you haven't told little Joe about, uh, you know. Flying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, I told him, Professor. You did, eh? Yeah. And didn't, didn't he, uh... Laugh? Nah, not little Joe. He ain't got a laughing bone in his body. Ain't that right, little brother? Oh, yeah, that's right. They, they call me old sober sides. What do you think of your big, brave brother flying? Oh, ma'am, there's nothing I'd rather see than my big brother taking a flying leap. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That's marvelous. Come on, come on, Amanda. Let's get to the test. Come on. No, no. No, you don't. Come on, put that horse right over there. You ain't getting out of my sight until after I make that test flight. You go back and tell Paul and Adam and everybody now. Put that horse up. There. Is that a gram sight? Yeah, what is it? It's my wing, of course. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. I'm just making a few improvements, you know. Oh, incidentally, horse, I hope you don't mind, but I ran short of cash down the general store and I charged all our supplies to your account. I wouldn't have done it except that the things we needed were really urgent. Well, it's, it's all right, Professor. Amanda, will you run in and get $17 and, uh, and 40 cents for horse? Oh, sure, Grandpa. Your brother got to be a very important man in these parts. Oh, there, there won't be a person around who hasn't heard of Horse Cartwright when we get finished. Yeah, I, I imagine you're right. There's not too many folks in these parts who fall out of trees all over the place. Not fall out, little brother. Fly out. F-L-Y. Fly. 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 I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Fly. 
Yes, fly. That's what he said, and that's what it is. Oh, the vistas that horse will open up for the whole world. Think of it, little Joe. Man spanning mountains and rivers and whole territories in one day. Why, flight will open up the locked doors to weary travelers and industry and commerce. <laughs> industry and commerce? Of course. No more mule trains carrying supplies over rocky terrains. No more weary buckboard rides into the nearest town. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When this flight is over, man will be as free as a bird. Oh, uh, nothing's free, Professor. Huh? I said nothing is free, Professor. What, what, what are you, you going to call this thing? Well, I, I hadn't mentioned it yet, but... Uh... Here, Grandpa. Oh, thank you. There you are, horse. I have an idea, though. <laughs> I shall call it the horsemobile. The horsemobile? Mm -hmm. Yes, so the mobile for movability and the horse for the man who's making the whole thing possible. The horsemobile. That's a wonderful name, Grandpa. Yeah, it's the kind of name nobody could forget. Well, well, we'll need something to transport the wings, you know. Oh, would you bring that ladder, little Joe? Oh, sure thing. Professor, how are we going to get the wings up in that tree? Tree? What? The tree? Yeah, well, the one where you jumped. Oh, Grandpa was just testing the harness in the tree. The flight is going to be from Devil Wind Cliff. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Watch out for these sticks, Hoss. Hey, how heavy is this sack, Professor? Oh, about the same weight as horse. I picked it very carefully. Well, our tests have to be extremely scientific, you know. Yeah, what do we have to have a test for, anyway? Well, you don't think I'd let the boy go off without one, do you? Well, why not? <laughs> you see, science, science is based on experiment. See, uh, foolproof tests before we allow humans to participate. It's a sort of a trial and error. Hey, well, let's hope horses' flight's a trial and not an error. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, horse, you just keep here. The wings here. Take them right to the edge, and you wait for the devil wind to start. Okay. Can you handle it? Yeah. Hello? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a big bird. You learned to sew so fast, anyhow. A necessity, brother, a necessity. How am I going to get you off that cliff if I don't get these wings patched up from the test? Yeah, the test. Look, little Joe, maybe there's something you ought to know. You know that book I've been studying, that, that bird book? Mm-hmm. Well, it's up in the hayloft back at the house. And folded inside the pages are my last will and testimony. Just in case something goes wrong. Goes oh, wrong? What do you mean goes wrong? I got a lot of plans made. Plans? Yeah, plans. Oh, so that professor makes a lot of sense if you just listen to him. You have to listen. I did. Well, then you must yeah. realize there's a tremendous future in this flying business. Tremendous. We'll make a fortune. 
Flying? Sure, flying. Look, after you make this first flight, horse, we make our own wings then. For what? For you. Horse, I, I can rent you out all over this territory. I can rent you out for, for errands. Uh, I can rent you out for circuses. You rotten, scheming little. You think I'd go through this again, risk my neck for, for money? Well, why not? You're doing it today for nothing. Oh, I see you finished there. Well, I'm, I'm just about finished, Professor. The horse seems to be all thumbs today. Oh, well, I'd beat myself, son, if I were about to fly. <laughs> Say, little Joe, will you, will you finish that other one there? Sure. Thanks a lot, because the horse has to get his final instructions. <laughs> Gee, how I envy you. <laughs> I wish I were the one going into space. Yeah, so do I. Huh? I just said that I love to fly. Oh, oh, well, that's wonderful. Come on, I'll take you over there. You see, when you get up on top of the hill, now this devil wind, are you listening to me, horse? Horse. You see, the devil wind comes up twice. Hey, horse. Joe! Hey, Ma wants you. Hey! that again. Last will and testimony. Now look, horse, if you, if you land on the slope, you know, keep flapping. Don't let the wings drag you. You control them. You see a bird in landing, well, he uses his feet. He lands on his feet. You do the same. You land on your heels and that'll keep you from falling on your face. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, I'll go and see if the wings are ready. You know, I think you might practice. <laughs> it won't hurt any, any harder. Hey, Pop. Did you find horse? No, but you better have a pretty good explanation for buying these little things from the general store. Just read that. Three dozen ladies' corset stays, two egret plumed hats, one dozen goose feathered pillows, and a 250 pound sack of grain. Has he gone right out of his mind? Ah, oh, yes, his mind. Look at that. Last will and testament. I, Horse Cartwright of Virginia City Territory of Nevada, declare this to be my last will and testimony. Now, what's all this about? Ladies' corsets, pillows, whole trousseau, and then the will. Well, haven't you ever heard of a shotgun wedding? A horse? <laughs> no, no. Either get married or get shot. So, the will. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We got any better ideas? No. But we can sure find out. <laughs> Joe, I, I just can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? There's nothing to it. Huh, if it's so easy, then how about you taking my place, huh? No, no, don't you get the point? Someday, maybe we'll want to carry passengers. You're the only bird big enough to do it. Oh, golly, horse, you look wonderful. Oh. Hey, that, that's almost worth flying for. But the rewards will be much greater than a mere kiss. Oh. <laughs> Oh, gee, Hoss, that was fun. <laughs> oh, but we've got more important things to do. Come on. Come on. <laughs> to the runway, man. What do you mean by the runway, Professor? The, the path I cleared. <laughs> See, now, horse will run right down to the edge and then take off. That's it. <laughs> horse. 
Horse, I want you to give it all you got. Really go, Horse. Now remember, Horse, it's like diving into the water. That's all it is. <laughs> Professor, I, I can't even swim. Oh, don't worry about swim, Horse. Just flap, brother. Just flap. Listen. Oh, that's the devil wind starting up now. I think it. Grandpa, it's gonna be a big one! <laughs> now, get on your mark. All right, horse, wings up. All right, let's go now. Come on, on your mark. Get set. Give it all you got, horse! <laughs> go ahead, horse. <laughs> Hey, look. That's the biggest bird I ever saw. That's no bird. That's your brother. Hey! Hey! Hey, what's the matter with you? Come on, fly, will you? I got a rock in my boot, Joe. That's it. Yeah. Oh, giant among men. He's got a rock. Which boot? Hurry up. We lose the wind. <laughs> what do you got these boots on with, Rock? Rock. <laughs> there ain't no rock in that boot. Hurry. It's coming fast. Come on, brother. Wing it. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Wing it. Wing it. What a big bird. See, you're playing this game too, Joseph. Uh, me? No, no, not exactly, Pod. It's Professor Klump's invention. I think I'll go help Adam. There's a Klump. Yes. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Professor Klump. Oh. Yes, your son just took a, a plunge toward immortality. <laughs> yeah, well, it looks like he almost made it. Oh, what's been going on up here? Why, didn't you know? This was Horse's big opportunity to prove that man can fly. <laughs> Man can fly? Yeah, but unfortunately... The... Hey, Professor! Uh, professor, we did it! We did it! We did? Yeah! Didn't you see? Oh, hi, Paul. You all right, son? Yeah. See what, horse? Professor, I, I'd have flown all the way to Virginia City if that wind hadn't pushed me down. What? Yeah. yeah. Didn't anybody see it? That burn that took off like I shot out of a cannon. And the wind stopped the flight? Sure did. Professor, that wind ain't no good whatsoever for flying. No, sir. What a man needs is a feller to fall on a ladder like little Joe did. That's what's going to make a man fly. Oh, uh, uh, a fulcrum. Well, bless my soul, I never... A fulcrum of all things. <laughs> Sure, yeah. What's a fulcrum? 
Oh, lever, you know, the catapult principle. Oh, I see that you have a scientific mind too, Mr. Cartwright. Say, Amanda, we're going to Washington. We'll get this thing patented. And maybe we can get some financial interest. Now? Yeah, why not? They may call me a crackpot, but I don't care. Let them. I've seen it done. Now go ahead, dear, and pack. Go on. I'll write to you, I promise. Horse, the world owes you a debt. A big debt. You know, we... Where's Ben? You know, we should have gone further than Da Vinci. We should have gone all the way back to Archimedes. You mean, give me a fulcrum and I can move the world. Yeah, that's exactly what he said, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> and that's just what Horse has proven. <laughs> Good boy, Horse. <laughs> Paul, uh, you ain't mad, are you? Well, how can I be mad at a man who has so much faith in science and so much faith in my son? Oh, shucks, Paul. He, he didn't know how scared I was until I landed. Hey, hey, there's just one thing I want to know. Now, were you just humoring that old man, or did, did you really fly? Well, little brother, like I always told you, you got to have faith. Why, with faith, you can... Move them out. Up you go. Don't fly away again. What do you think? Well, I'll, uh, I'll go along with that faith-moving mountains, but uh, flying over them? I don't know, Adam. I just don't know. that it was an insult. I'm tired of your jealousy. Now behave yourself. Well, so you're coming to see us, eh? Oh, what a pretty little girl. But on behalf of the entire population of our fair township, welcome to Virginia City. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. For myself, for my troop, and for my sister, Donna Luisa. Ben! Ben Cosnight! <laughs> <laughs> now, now this whole trip from San Francisco is worth all the inconvenience. Well, I was wondering if you're going to have time to say hello to an old friend. Right. My delight is beyond expression. No, ten years now. It's <laughs> ten years. Oh, Guido, my son Joseph. Ah, Senor Guido sorry, Morales. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, Bettina, Carlo. I have the honor to present my old and good friend Ben Cartwright, also his son Joseph. Signorina Bettina Anselmi, Signor Carlo Alfieri. How do you do? Oh, Donna Luisa, you remember Ben Cartwright? Oh, who could Donna forget Luisa. Ben Cartwright? <laughs> it is such a pleasure to see you again. How okay. wonderful to see you. This is my son, Joseph Donna Luisa. Uh, now, this is what I've done. As soon as I heard that you were coming into town, I canceled your hotel reservations. My two older boys are away in a cattle buying trick, and, and there's uh, lots of room at the Ponte Rosa, so you're all coming out there to stay with us. Oh, yeah, just like that. Just like that. Magnifico. Come on. this stuff with you wherever you go? Ah, uh, but of course. How else could I satisfy the inner man? And if the inner man is not content, then the outer man is not fit to inhabit a civilized society. <laughs> a pinch of oregano, the finest, from Greece. A pinch, no more. 
<laughs> it's like the garlic. One wishes only the perfume, not a suffocation. <laughs> you know, it is not everyone I would give my prized family recipes to. Tonight, my old friend, you will dine on a caponata di melanzani and a pasta di sardi, such as you have not eaten since you were at my villa in Palermo. Yeah, well, I remember when I was at your villa in Palermo, my clothes fit just a bit too snugly. <laughs> well, first it has to simmer a little. Well, while it's simmering, why don't we uh, have a little masala? I still have a couple of bottles left in that case I brought back with me. <laughs> <laughs> so Ira gets sick on the vinegar and Horst ends up winning the contest anyway. Oh. <laughs> well, what's so funny? I'm just telling about the time I entered Horst in that flapjack eating contest. Oh, yeah, well, let's not bring up those painful memories again. <laughs> and let us not spoil my melanzani. It'll be ready in a little while, so I suggest you ladies get dressed for dinner, huh? Of course. No. Oh, Come along, Jack. Joe? Signor Altieri? Yeah, thanks, Bob. No, thank you. Uh, if you will excuse me, I also have to change. Uh, Sicilians and temperament. They go together like food and wine. Oh, I don't know. You're Sicilian. And uh, I've never noticed very much temperament in you. No, that's true, of course, but... Huh? <laughs> Salute, eh? Salute. Salute. Bettina. Bettina, I want to talk with you. Please. I don't like the way you say that. Bettina, please. Come in. What is the matter now? The same as always. Does, does it give you pleasure to, to give me such pain? Pain, pain, pain. Carlo, it seems to me you use that expression much too often. How do I give you pain? You know without my telling you. Do you think I'm blind? The way you're, you're flirting with the one they call Little Joe? Because I am being courteous to the son of our host, your insane jealousy calls it flirting. Now that... I can't stand this much longer. You sound like we were married. That's what I want. Carlo, Carlo, please, don't suffocate me with your love. What is the matter with you? I love you, but... I... I, I must feel free. Don't you understand? Free? Free to do what? Huh? To flirt with every man you see. That is what you think I'm doing. All right. From now on, I will do just as you accuse me. Tell the truth. Have you ever dined more royally? <laughs> well, to tell the truth, not since you cooked for me in Palermo. Ah, you see why I love this Ben Cartwright. I ask for a compliment with outrageous bluntness, and from his magnificent heart, he gives me willingly what I ask. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, Ben Cartwright. My brother is as always a spoiled and mischievous child. Pay no attention to her. She speaks as she does only because she brought me up when our parents died. When I have a white beard down to here, I would always be to my beloved sister an infant. <laughs> Well, for an infant, you didn't do too badly in that dark alley in Palermo. Ah, that was nothing. Nothing? <laughs> well, if it wasn't for that nothing, I wouldn't be sitting right here tonight. What do you mean? That's how I met Guido. Yeah, I was going back to the hotel. It was dark late at night, and I lost my bearings and wound up in an alley. And there were two fellas there with uh, stilettos, and they came at me, and for a little while it was uh, nip and tuck, until suddenly there was Guido. Jumping at them, swinging away. And I tell you, between the two of us, we made short shrift of those two, didn't we? That was a fight, my friend. Now, that was a fight. And how did you pay me back, huh? Listen, all of you. He challenged me to a game of chess. This ingrate, who now so charmingly poses as our host, do you know what he did to me? He checkmated me in seven moves. Seven! Hey! <laughs> but never again. Over the years, ever since that disastrous night, I have developed a unique method of play. I challenge you to a return match, my friend. Anytime. Tonight? 
Right now. Good. <laughs> As usual, I have eaten too much. Well, why don't we go outside and get some air? That sounds wonderful. Come on, Guido, let's not hold up the game. Which hand? Uh, that one. So, you have the advantage of the first move. But I warn you, it will not affect the outcome. Well, we'll see, we'll see. What kind of crazy move is that? Opening with the night. Crazy like a fox. And I am ready to spring the trap that you are headed for. Hmm. Well, take your time, take your time. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Mm -hmm. Oh, how you doing? Is your room all right? Fine, thank you. Uh, did uh, Bettina tell you that uh, she and I are practically engaged to be married? No, she didn't mention it. Well, let me tell you then. We are. Congratulations. Uh, now that you know, I must insist. Leave it alone. Oh, what do you mean, insist? Let me put it in, a, in another way. I'm warning you. <laughs> Look, I think you're making a big thing out of nothing. Just stay away from Bedina. On oh guard, your queen is in danger. Yeah, so I see. <laughs> take your time, take all the time you want. This will take some time to figure out. I tell you what, Ben. Suppose we continue this tomorrow. If you don't mind, I'd like to retire. The food and the wine, the long trip, I'm rather tired. And I have to set up the act tomorrow morning. Oh, certainly. I think I'll just... Stay put here and try to figure out what you're up to. Good night, Bob. Good night. Yes, Guido. I wanted to say good night and ask how you felt. I feel fine. Why? Well, it was a long trip. I thought if you were tired, I could postpone the practice tomorrow. No. I, I will be ready. That is, if Carlo will. Carlo? We had another quarrel about his insane jealousy. I don't know what to do about him. Oh, little one. Do not bother your pretty head with all the Carlos in this world. They are just young boys spouting puppy love. Someday, when you are ready, you will know real love. And meanwhile, I must endure Carlos' moves. 
I told you, forget about Carlo. Now you go to bed and get a good rest, you hear? Yes, master. <laughs> oh, Guido, what would we all do without you? <laughs> good night. Who is it? Borelli. Enter. Good. You're getting ready for rehearsal tomorrow, huh? I'll be ready, as always. Mm -hmm. Hold out your hand. You call that being ready, as always? It's Bettina. She, she's driving me crazy. And I love her so much. And she tortures me, she tortures me constantly. Always flirting with other men. Tonight, it was... Cartwright? right? Yes, yes, right under my nose, in front of everybody there. Listen, Carlo. Bettina's old enough to choose her own man. Perhaps you're not the one. Perhaps you should give her up. No, no, don't say that. But I must. Our lives depend on each other, each other's hands. And I cannot afford instability in the act. If you cannot solve your personal problems, I will have to look for a more mature, less romantic aerialist. Oh, no. No, the, the trapeze is my life. I thought Bettina was your life. Uh, I need both. <laughs> well, unfortunately, few men get everything they want. So make up your mind, Carlo. Either settle these rivalries once and for all, or give up Bettina. I'll give you until we open in Virginia City. In the meantime, get yourself under control. And remember, we set up the rigging and start rehearsal tomorrow. Just great. I couldn't believe it. Boy, that looks like fun. Guido, careful. After all these years, you're still afraid, huh? I'm always afraid. He's too old for the trapeze. have retired long ago. I've told him and told him, but he won't listen. Why won't he retire? I don't know. Unless he's trying to punish himself for the death of Angelina. 
Angelina? Oh, I forgot you haven't seen Guido for years. Angelina was a young Aya realist he married. Together they performed the Salto Mortale, their death-defying leap, until one night in Seville, only three months after their marriage, Guido failed to catch her, and she fell to her death. He has been blaming himself ever since. Only he would listen to reason, give up the trapeze to the younger men. Hey, really? Magnifico, eh? Beautiful. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> well, little Joe? Do you think you would like to try the trapeze? Oh, no, not me. I have enough trouble getting on and off horses, let alone a trapeze. <laughs> that reminds me. I have a favor to ask of you. Anything. I have never ridden a horse. Would you teach me? Sure. When do you want to start? Right now? Okay, but you can't ride in that. Let's get back to the Ponderosa and get you something a little more appropriate. All right. <laughs> You know, I think you did real well for the first time. Do you really think so? Absolutely. Even with my handicap? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the lesson, little Joe. Oh, believe me, that was my pleasure. I, uh, I guess I better put up the horses. Touch. Game still alive. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Sure. I warned you to leave Petina alone. I can't fight you now while you're a guest in the house. I'm challenging you to a duel. Don't you understand? If you're not a coward, you will accept. What, are you serious? Never more so. Are you man enough to defend your honor? <laughs> oh, come on. And now, this is pretty silly, isn't it? I fail to see the humor. Do you accept or not? A duel. All right, fine. I, I have the choice of weapons, right? Correct. OK, I choose fists. I agree. Name the time. This afternoon, about an hour. That is acceptable. Hey, now one more condition. It's just between you and me. You don't tell anybody about it. Agreed? Agreed. All right, I'll meet you by the barn in an hour. I'll have the horses ready. neglected to warn you. In addition to being an expert on the trapeze, I'm an expert with my fists. All right, expert. Let's see what you got. We're both getting a couple of good legs. Come on, let's forget it. Now you made me mad.
Come on, I'll give you a hand up on your arms. Leave me alone. You go. All right, I'm sorry. Crossed him by the east pasture on my way back to town. Had that stuck in him. It's my knife. Is he going to make it? I don't know, Ben. He's got at most an outside chance. Fortunately, the knife was deflected by a rib. Is there anything we can do? No. It's out of our hands, Joe. But somebody should stay with him. I, I want to. Please. Fine. Let me know if he regains consciousness. I'll be in the kitchen. I could use some coffee. Fury getting along. He's still alive, that's about all I can say. Well, that's something. At least it won't be a murder charge. But I am going to have to book you on assault. Oh, come on, Roy. You know, I didn't have any more to do with that than you did. Wait a minute. You admit to the fight and was your knife. Somebody stole my knife. Oh, Roy. Hi, Ben. You, you don't believe that Joe's guilty of anything? No, Ben, I don't really believe that little Joe here is guilty of something like this, but What's until. That? Until Alfieri regains consciousness, if he does, and is able to tell us exactly what happened, I'm going to have to do my job. Well, of course, you have to do your job. Well, we'll know what happened when Alfieri comes to. Joe, I think you better go along with Roy. All right. Well, thanks, Ben. And you will let me know if there's any change in his condition? Of course I will. Thanks. Are, well, what can I say except you have my sympathy? Thank you, Guido. I just don't understand. Who could have done such a thing to that young fellow? Why? You may think it a foolish thing to suggest, but uh, to take your mind off your worries, let's, uh, let's resume our chess game. Yeah. 
Why not? Better than just standing around waiting. <laughs> we can get rid of this. <laughs> I believe it is my move. that too much thought. I told you, I've spent a long time improving my game. You must be pretty confident. <laughs> I am going to get some fresh air. Dona Luisa is staying by Carlo. My move should keep you occupied for a bit, so if you'll excuse me, I, uh, I want to talk to Patina. Ashamed of dear Bettina. But I do. I, I teased him. Constantly made him jealous. Because he behaved like a schoolboy. He is young, immature, unaware of real beauty. But I should have understood. I am young too. But you're a woman, and a very beautiful woman. And you will need and seek maturity when. when Carlo goes to his maker. Oh, don't say that! We must face the truth. Mia cara. My love. Guido. Che cosa c'è? I must speak to you. Now. Go away. I still haven't figured out your strategy. But I will. Well, take your time. I'll check on Carlo. How dare you summon me that way? What are you up to, my little brother? What kind of talk is that? Don't try to put me off. I know you too well. Don't forget I was both mother and father to you. I know every beat of your heart. And I know you for what you really are. And what is that, my beloved sister? A child. A, a willful, spoiled child who thinks only of what he wants. What is it you want now? I don't know what you're talking about. We do. Guido, don't you know I speak to you for your own good? Don't you know I love you as a mother loves her child? Will you stop calling me a child? Don't raise your voice to me. You resent my calling you a child, but you are a child. Oh. That is your genius on the trapeze and your weakness in life. Oh, Guido, I have seen the way you look at Bettina when you think no one is observing. I have seen the desire in your eyes. You talk like a fool. Petine is like my own daughter. Oh, no. What I say is the truth. Admit it, you hope to have Petina for your own. Why? To replace Angelina? Shut up! Not until I have finished. Angelina is dead. Dead. Quiet! Fala finita! God will punish you. If Carlo dies... Must I strike you to make you stop? Go ahead. Do what you wish with me. No. Leave Carlo alone, Guido. Leave Petina alone. It is too late for you. You are too old. I 
I hate you. You move. Hmm? Oh. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Well, good. I must say you've changed over the years. In what way, my friend? Well, uh, in this chess game, for instance. You become a player of daring and risk. Well, what is wrong with daring and risk, so long as you win? Well, nothing, of course, depends upon what you want to win and why. <laughs> You've done very well for yourself. You're a man of world renown, at the very top of your profession, a risky profession. Don't you think it's about time you... you thought of retiring? Retiring? Why, oh, Ben, I feel as young as a, as a boy of 20. No. No, age isn't the way you feel, Ben. You surround yourself with youth and you stay young. Well, I... I enjoy being young, and now I enjoy being the age I am. Yes, but you have a family. And I have nothing. Only my sister, Donna Luisa, of course. Yes, I... I understand that since we were last together, you... Uh, you had a wife. Angelina? Uh, my beautiful young Angelina. You must be very lonely without her. Lonely? My friend, you don't know the torture, the anguish of such loneliness. It is, it is more than I can endure, and I will not stand for it any longer. I will not. Have you, uh, have you thought of what you might do? Do? <laughs> well, I'll get married again, of course. Another beautiful girl, like Bettina? Well, why not Bettina? No reason. It, it depends on Bettina. <laughs> well, Bettina's a woman. She needs to be told what to do. I'm afraid you've lost a queen. You moved right into my trap. <laughs> I sacrificed a knight and captured a queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that trap worked very well, Guido. Very well indeed. Well, I guess without this queen of mine, the game's pretty well over. I'm afraid so. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must get some rest. Remember, we give our first performance tomorrow night. Oh, are you going on without Carlo? Even without Carlo. I am the star of the act. The others are replaceable. Sacrifice some night to capture a queen. see anybody, you didn't hear anybody, nothing. Oh, it's just like I told you. As far as I know, Carlo and I were the only ones out there. And I didn't have the knife with me, Roy, because I know I left it in my room. Well, it's obvious that you weren't the only ones out there. But anybody around the Ponderosa could have stole your knife. Yeah. Quite a chess game. Quite a chess game. Oh, what's chess got to do with it? Oh, Joe. <laughs> Sometimes you learn a great deal about a chess player when he's willing to sacrifice a knight to capture a queen. Borelli has been playing you and Carlo against each other all along. Borelli? I thought he was a friend of yours. Yeah, well, 
I guess he was. But the years change a man, I guess. Particularly when he's afraid of growing old. Ben, you think that Morelli done it, but you ain't got a shred of proof of that. Roy, I think I can prove my point. With Hoss's help. Hoss? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I rode into town last night and sent him a wire. He'll be along in the next stage. Morelli's never seen him. Roy, I want you to help me set up a trap for him. Before his performance, tonight. Borelli likes to play games. Well, we're going to teach him a game that he won't forget. Give me a piece of paper. I want to write a note for Haas to send to him. Joe, don't worry. Out of there, partner. I'm glad to see you got my note. <laughs> I don't reckon I'd even recognize you, but I know you're Borelli. I asked you to come only because you aroused my curiosity. What is it you uh, want to see me about? Well, now, uh, I thought I made that downright clear. Now, would you like me to pay a little visit to the local sheriff? <laughs> come to the point. I have to give a performance within an hour. All right, Mr. Clown, I'll lay it right on the line for you and make it real simple. Then you can stop this fancy dee-daddling. So happens that yesterday afternoon I was taking myself a little nap up there on one of them big pine trees on the Ponderosa. When all of a sudden there's all this racket, see? And that's what woke me up. Two fellas fighting. One of them whooped the other one, jumped on his horse and ran off and left that other poor fella just laying there. He just sort of laid down and passed out. And then all of a sudden, the strangest thing happened. Would you like for me to continue? Proceed. Then all of a sudden, there was this other fellow. He must have been hiding out there behind one of them trees all along, because he comes sneaking up about this time, see? He sneaked right up on that poor fellow laying there, and you know what he done? He got himself a knife in his fist. Enough! I don't, uh, I don't hear too good out of this here. I said, what do you want? Well, now, I've been hankering to take myself a little trip, see a little bit of Mexico. And I sure would hate to go down there short of cash, if, if you know what I mean. How much? Huh? How much? Oh, I, I figure 5,000 gold. Impossible. I could not raise that money in so short a time. My, oh, my, that's, that's a shame. Yes, sir, that's, that's a terrible shame. I figure that fella Ben Cartwright would pay that and then some to get that boy his out of jail, don't you reckon? <laughs> all right, all right. I have no choice in the matter. You will have to wait until I wire my bankers in New York. Huh? I said you will have to wait until I wire my bankers in New York. Fair enough, partner. Pepper, I'll shoot! Get out! I said stop! Just does it! going to do the salto mortale. Enrico, go up there. It's too late for you. 
You are too old. It is too late for you. You are too old. Before I leave, I want you to understand. I did not know my brother was guilty. It is true I suspected it. But I could not face it. Do you believe me? Of course I believe you, Donna Luisa. I can't tell you how sorry I am about everything. It is I who am sorry. Then... Goodbye, Ben Cartwright. Goodbye, Dr. Wilson. You take care of yourself. <laughs> See, I've learned my lesson. I'm no longer jealous, I think. <laughs> It up. You gotta be kidding. Oh boy. Come at it, brother. You got no muscles? Well, good morning, boys. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning. Your father come into town with you? Yes, sir. He's over at the bank. Oh, good. I'll look in on him. Uh, just a minute. I've got some books in the wagon that Barbara asked for. I wonder if you'd see that she gets them. Well, certainly, Adam, but uh, why don't you take them to her over at the school? I'm sure she'd be glad to see you. By the way, Colonel, how's that niece of yours getting along, anyhow? I'm proud of that girl. I think she's going to make this town a fine school teacher. Young and ain't giving her too much trouble or nothing. Well, this is rough frontier country, and she knows it. But she also knows that it's a teacher's job to start shaping the kind of country this is going to be. Sounds like there's quite a gal behind that pretty face. Oh, there is. Colonel, you know you've done a lot of fine things for Virginia City, but bringing your niece out here to teach the school may turn out to be the most important of all. I'd like to think so. Well, it was pleasant running into you boys, and... Now I'll be on my way and see if I can catch up with your father. Take it easy, Colonel. Colonel. Now, Adam, buy you a drink. 
Might put some muscle in them bones. Besides that, I'm thirsty. Come on. So am I, but I've got to walk over to school and get those books to Barbara. Well, that's that's too bad, Adam. You got to walk all the way down there to school and then all the way back again. Oh, I don't mind. I bet you don't. Most of you have decided that school is just a place for fun and games. Well, I'd like to tell you something. Going to school can determine the rest of your life. It's a privilege that you will be getting benefits from for more years than you have been alive so far. And now, if it's all right with Miss Scott, maybe you would like to go home and think it over. You're excused. Thank you. Barbara, sit down. Now, we knew this wasn't going to be an easy job. You know what Virginia City is like. Now, you took this job because you thought it was important. You had an obligation. I believe that was the word you used, obligation. You wanted to point this frontier toward, toward culture. Now, you probably don't think so right now because of what just happened out there. But is the job any less an obligation than it was two days ago? No, it isn't. But do you still think I can do the job? Yes. If you think you can. Well, I'll try. Well, I'll tell you one thing for sure. I'll do all I can to help. As a member of the school board and as a friend. As a member of the school board and as a friend? What's your advice? Well, now, I'm glad you asked that, young lady. I think you should get some fresh air. I think that you and your uncle should come out Sunday to the Ponderosa and we'll get some horses and go riding. But I don't know how to ride. I've never been on a horse. I'll teach you. <laughs> Can I try it by myself? Sure, go ahead. You got a pretty good pupil there. Must be kind of strange teaching the teacher, huh, Adam? Oh, there's nothing strange about it. Be a good teacher, you first have to be a good pupil, and she's good. She's a good what? Teacher? Sure, she's a good teacher, but I meant pupil. What's the teacher teaching the teacher? Hey, will you cut that out? Watching her ride in circles and listening to you talk in circles is making me dizzy. Well, how goes the job of teaching the teacher? Oh, great. Here we go again. You're doing very well, Barbara. Well, why not? The teacher has a good teacher. Yeah. Adam, do I have to ride around here? Can we go out for a while? Well, I think it's enough for the first time out. Maybe after lunch we can take that ride. Uh, why don't you just tie him up over there? All right. Come on. You better get the doctor. Uh, you're gonna 
have to take it easy for a while, young lady. How easy? Well, for one thing, you're going to have to stay at home for at least two weeks. And then it'll be another two weeks before that bone really has a chance to knit itself together again. Well, I'll see that she follows orders, Doctor. And uh, thank you very much for all your kindness. Not at all. Now, uh, Adam, if you'll stop teaching people how to fall off horses, maybe I can get Hawes to drive me home and finish my dinner. Be happy to, Doc. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Uh, Barbara, I think you ought to rest a bit before you oh, go back home. Huh? Thank you. And uh, could I get you some hot tea or something? Oh, no, thank you, Mr. Anything Carter. Anything Don't bother. There's something worrying me. What's that, my dear? Well, obviously, it's going to be difficult for me to teach school for a while. Oh, you're not going to teach school for a while. The doctor left definite orders. Well, then we'll have to find a substitute. I don't know anybody in these parts who can do the job. I do. Who? Adam Cartwright. <laughs> don't be silly. Adam, I'm serious. You can't be, Barbara. I'm not qualified. But you're the only one who understands what I've been trying to do. And nobody else feels it's as important as you do. You used that word, Adam. Important. And you used another word, too. Help. You said you'd be willing to help me as a friend. You used that word, too, Adam. How you feeling? Fine. It's going to be a little rough teaching school in the next few weeks. Oh, uh, I think your brother has just become our new school teacher. Yeah, I guess I did. Well, I think Adam will do a fine job. And now that that's settled, uh, we ought to be thinking about getting on home. Yeah. Uh, Joe, will you bring the Surrey around to the front of the house? Joe. Uh, teacher, may, may I leave the room? I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> teacher. Well, I guess I'll survive. This uh, teaching's a little bit harder than I figured. Uh, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm so bored. If I have to stay around this house one more day, I think I'll scream. Well, what about the school? Well, it's uh, what I came to talk to you about. Oh, how unflattering. I thought it was my irresistible beauty that drew you here. Oh, for a girl with a bad shoulder, you're feeling pretty good today, aren't you? Oh, it's so good to see you, Adam, after mooning around here all by myself. Well, what about the school? Well, I remember how we talked about uh, teaching something besides the three R's? Mm-hmm. Well, I got an idea about teaching some history. Well, we have a history course. I know, but uh, our own history, history of the territory. That sounds like an interesting idea. I have an idea that children will like the frontier. After all, they're a part of it, and in a way, it's a, it's a history of America. Adam, I think that's a splendid idea. But it would take some research, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, it sure will. I'll be lucky to stay one day ahead of the class. But I've got an idea that uh, might make the research a little bit easier. What? Well, a great deal has happened here in a short length of time. A lot of it happened in the last 50 years, so there are men still alive who made it happen. Men like the Colonel, my father, and Philip Dietersheimer, Sam Chaffee. You can talk to them about it and get it firsthand. I'm going to write Sam Chaffee in California and have a few talks with my father and uh, quite a few sessions with your uncle. Oh, he'll be so flattered. I'm glad you approve. And uh, you might warn your uncle that I'll be picking his brain and making a nuisance of myself. Oh, <laughs> he won't mind at all. Now, 
afternoon, Colonel. Good of you to stop by. How goes the school teaching, Adam? Well, it's... Coming along. How's Barbara? Well, she's getting restless, poor child. Oh, she tells me that uh, you want to talk to me. Yes, I do. Why don't you come in? Go. Did Barbara tell you what I wanted of you? Yes. Uh, something about uh, picking my brain for a course in territorial history that you want to give. Yes, I... Uh... I thought that I could make the history uh, live for them, the kids, through men like you who made it. Well, Adam, I, uh, I think you exaggerate my importance. After all, I, uh, I was only one of many. I suppose you're one of the few still left, you and Sam Chaffee. Sam Chaffee. It's been 20 years since I've seen Sam. You know, Adam, he's a smarter man than I am. You ought to talk to him. Well, I've already sent him a letter, but uh, you I can talk to, so... I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you sort of reminisce, just sort of ramble, and... You know, just start right from the beginning. I'll take notes. Well, if... Uh, if you think it'll help... Oh, it will, believe me. Well, then, I... Uh, I first saw this territory about uh, 30 years ago. I was already in the army. I came out here with a surveying party. Virginia City didn't exist then. Matter of fact, there was very little evidence of civilization. Checkmate. Uncle, you're not paying any attention. Happy. Hello, Colonel. Hello, Sam. It's been a long time. Nice place you've got here. Oh, uh, my niece, Barbara, Mr. Chaffee. How do you do, Mr. Chaffee? How do you do? I knew that brains ran in the Scott family. It's nice to see that beauty does, too. Thank you. Uh, Sam, would you come into my office, please? Of course. Uh, very nice to have met you, miss. How have you been, Colonel? Fine. I see you've put on a little weight. Oh, I'm eating better than the last time you saw me. And the California climate agrees with me. I've got a nice place out there. Nearly as nice as this. Sam, I told you we should never see each other again. What did you come here for? Well, Colonel, you've been doing well, and I've been doing well, and I imagine you'd like to keep things that way. I know I would. But it seems like we may be in for a little trouble. What trouble? I got a letter from a man named Adam Cartwright. Yes, Adam... Uh... Adam told me he was writing you. Adam is taking my niece's place as schoolteacher temporarily while she recovers from her accident. I know. He wrote me that. Also that he's uh, teaching some local history. Yes, and it seems that we're about the only two old fogies left over from the early days. <laughs> he's been uh, asking me quite a few questions about those days. Is that why you came here? To see Adam? Out there, I told your niece I knew you had brains. Have you forgotten how to use them? What do you mean by that? Have you also forgotten some of the history we made? Adam is going to teach historical generalities. He is not going into personal things. How do you know? How do you know that these little gabfests of yours might not inspire him to dig a little deeper than generalities? I know. Besides, he can find nothing. Nothing. It's impossible. Anything is possible, and I'm not taking any chances. I like what I've got, how I live. I don't mean to have it taken away. Now, you tell this Adam Cartwright that his little excursion into territorial history is over. I'm afraid that's going to be difficult. Not when you consider the alternatives. I understand you're a friend of these Cartwrights. Well, you better do something, Colonel. Otherwise, I will, and 
I'm not a friend of theirs. All right. I'll try. Do more than try, Colonel. Get results. I'll be staying at the hotel until you do. Good night, Miss Scott. I'm very pleased to have met you. Good night, Mr. Chaffee. It was nice meeting you, too. Good night, Colonel. Good night. Uncle, was that the same Mr. Chaffee that Adam was talking about? Yes, uh, we, uh, we knew each other a long time ago when we were young. Barbara, I, uh, I'd like you to do me a favor. Of course. Tell Adam I don't want any more interviews about the past. I'm, I'm a busy man, and it uh, takes up too much of my time. That's too bad. Just when Adam was getting so enthusiastic about the progress he was making. He said he could even teach the course in another week. Well, he'll just have to forget it. Digging into old men's memories is a silly occupation anyhow. Did Mr. Chaffee have... Anything to do with your change of mind? No, no, no. He uh, just happened to be in Virginia City on business. Although he did say that he received a letter from Adam asking a lot of fool questions. Like me, he's too busy for that sort of thing. So you tell Adam, hmm? Yes, Uncle. me to speak to you about those interviews, Adam. He told me to tell you that he was just too busy to continue with them. I'm sorry. I can't understand it. He was so enthusiastic, so cooperative. I can't either. Except the night he changed his mind was the night Sam Chaffee came to see him. Well, uh, is Chaffee in town? Mm-hmm. On business, so my uncle says. Well, no point in my talking to Chaffee either. I got an answer to my letter. Among other things, he said that I was impertinent. Maybe he did influence your uncle. Maybe. Too bad. I'll just have to dig into books and documents instead of getting it firsthand. I'm sorry, Adam. Well, it's not your fault. Well, I better be going, I guess. Good night, Barbara. Good night. Hello, boys. Ah, oh, good morning, Colonel. Come in. Yes, uh, if, uh, if you have some time. The uh, recess still has ten minutes. Good to see you. Sit down. Thank you. I hope that you've changed your mind. Well, uh, no. On the contrary, since Barbara tells me that uh, you will persist in your history course uh, even without my, my dubious contributions, I felt I ought to have this conversation with you. All right. What's on your mind? Simply this. Uh, do you really believe that... Uh, that the parents are interested in having their children burdened with this extra cost? I doubt if some of the parents give the matter of school courses any thought at all. Why, certainly they do, my boy. They want their children to learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. And? Well, certainly nothing as useless as a, a history of the territory. I wouldn't call it useless, Colonel. As a matter of fact, I don't think any knowledge could really be called useless. That gets us into a field of uh, 
academic philosophic inquiry that I don't think we ought to go into. But about this little history course of yours, if you'll drop it, I will consider it a personal tribute to my mature judgment. In all good conscience, I'm afraid I can't do that. All right, Adam. Give my best to Barbara. I'll do that, my boy. Adam, are you going to get any sleep one of these nights? I didn't realize how much work I was getting into when I started this course. <laughs> How's it going? Fine. The kids seem to really be enjoying it. They seem to be taking it home, and their parents are getting interested. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about it. As a matter of fact, uh, Colonel Scott dropped by this afternoon to talk to me about it. Oh? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't seem to be entirely in favor of the whole thing. He asked me to see if I could get you to drop it. Funny, he asked the same thing directly a couple of days ago. Oh, really? He didn't tell me that. Did he say why he wanted the course dropped? I gather he thinks it's a waste of time. <laughs> I don't like the idea of Colonel Scott trying to tell a teacher what he can or cannot teach. Well... I don't either, and I told him so. So, uh, Colonel Scott has called a meeting of the school board. He what? Yeah, for tomorrow night at the schoolhouse. I wonder why he's going so far over a history course. Well, maybe we'll find out tomorrow night. Terribly sorry, my horse threw a shoe and sorry we're late. Oh, just a minute, Adam. I protest Adam Cartwright's being at this meeting. I think I should be able to tell my story without being inhibited by your presence. I think the board, as well as the whole town, knows your side of it. Colonel, Adam and I are members of this board. Exactly. And if things get down to a vote, I think that his vote will be even more prejudiced than yours. Colonel, I think you're being a little presumptuous. Oh, that's all right. Uh... I'll leave. The Colonel's right. He should have the freedom to say what he wants. Gentlemen. No. Uh, gentlemen. No one is more interested in the history of this territory than I. Because, as Adam himself has pointed out, I was part of it. But I believe that history needs the element of time in order to gain perspective. Otherwise, it becomes just one man's opinion. In this case, Adam Cartwright's, who is not even qualified as a teacher, but is merely substituting temporarily for my niece. Now, I should think that a man with no background in teaching would have his work cut out for him just drilling the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic without trying to teach a new course that requires extra work from the children that interferes with their chores at home. Well, thank you, Charlie. Good to see
Well, am I fired? Nope. Although the Colonel tried every which way to have you fired. What made him lose? Uh, he made the mistake of putting everything on a personal basis. Said the board should indulge him because of what he'd done for the town. As your advocate, I must say I made a very effective presentation of your case. The vote was unanimous for you to be allowed to continue. You don't seem very pleased about it. No, frankly, I'm not. I'm afraid we've lost an old friend in Colonel Scott. He's a man who's contributed a great deal to the territory. Well, you see, that's what I don't understand. If the Colonel has contributed so much to the history of this territory, then why doesn't he want me to teach it? I've got every book that's ever been written about this territory. I've got every document, map, paper, pamphlet, record or reference I could get my hands on. You're going to be quite an authority by the time you get through this. Oh, we'll have one friend less, but you're sure going to be an authority. It's funny. I started out to teach a course in territorial history. Somehow it's gotten all out of proportion. Hmm. Well, what, what made it go out of proportion? Maybe you ought to re-examine your position. Adam, are you sure that you're just not annoyed because the Colonel tried to stop you from doing something that you set out to do? No. I think my position is quite clear. I just want to teach a simple course in territorial history. But it doesn't seem to be that simple. But the answer is here. Somewhere. You put in a lot of late nights over these books. Got to get some rest. doing here so early? I wanted to talk to you. I'm at the school board meeting last night? No. About, um, coming back to my job. My arm is all better, and, uh... I see. So your uncle did speak to you about the meeting last night. Adam... Don't make it any more difficult than it is. I love my uncle. I know you do, Barbara. So the job is yours. I'll, uh, I'll finish out the day. It's Friday, you can take over Monday. And tell your uncle I'll have my things out by tonight.
have no idea who they were. No. Somebody sent them in, I'm sure. Hired them, you mean? Well, I hope they get paid. They earn their money. Well, I think we all have a pretty good idea who paid them. We know who it was, don't we? It was Colonel Scott, wasn't it? Yeah, but we can't prove that. Oh, I've known Colonel Scott for a long time. He's always been reasonable and generous, one of the most respected men in the territory. I couldn't possibly associate him with this kind of violence. But, Paul, facts are facts. I think we ought to confront him. Well, I'll get it. Barbara, come on in. I heard what happened in town. Nothing serious. Nothing more serious than what three hired toughs can do. Oh, Adam, I had no idea he'd go this far. Uh, Barbara, we're not sure who's behind all this. Oh, aren't we? He's suddenly become a different man. We had a terrible argument. On account of me? I believe in what you're doing, Adam. When I told my uncle that I was going to continue with the history course, he told me to leave. Leave? Yes, I'm going back east, Mr. Cartwright. I just came over to say goodbye. Well, what about your school teaching? I don't know what to do. Well, you'll, you'll go back to teaching. That's what you'll do. And you'll honor us by staying here until you've got yourself settled. Oh, I couldn't impose on you. Well, don't worry about that. You'll earn your keep. Because if you're going to continue teaching that history course, as you said to your uncle, and uh, I'm going to need your help finishing up my notes. I thought you'd given up. No, this beating changed my mind. Besides, I'm on the edge of discovering something new. You'll see what I mean when we get into my notes, so... Why don't we just get started, huh? Come on. neighborly of you? This is not a neighborly visit, Sam. Oh? Did you have Adam Cartwright beaten up? <laughs> the funny thing is, I'll bet the Cartwrights figure you did it. There isn't going to be any more violence, Sam. I warned you once in the past about violence, and you ignored me. But you took advantage of it all the same, didn't you, Colonel? Now, you listen to me. I am ready to use this gun any time I have to. Just as I did in the past. Whether or not I use it on Adam Cartwright, that's up to you. You get him to shut up and everything's going to be all right. You can keep your precious good name and I'll keep what I've got. Sam, Adam Cartwright doesn't have anything on us. And even if by chance he did stumble across something, he couldn't use it. Why, he's too smart a young man to make an accusation without proof. And there is no proof, Sam. You know that. You were always the talker, Colonel, leaving it to me to do something. So I'm telling you, if Adam Cartwright makes one more speech, teaches one more class, I'll take care of him my way. You beginning to see? According to this original land grant, this line ran from here to there. But according to the Army survey made by your uncle 30 years ago, the line runs from here to here. That's like a thin pie wedge. Yes, a thin slice. But until the mines ran out and the timber was gone, one of the richest slices in the territory. And my uncle? Well, I don't know. He changed the line, but Sam Chaffee filed on it. My uncle said that he and Mr. Chaffee were business partners years ago. Oh, Adam, if, if we prove that... My uncle is responsible for this. It, it'll be terrible. I don't know. The records are so old and altered, they merely point to suspicion. 
I don't know if we can prove anything. Shh. What is it? What's wrong? Shh. trying to do, Charlie? Get yourself killed? Charlie, speak you. Come on in. Well? <sighs> well, I must have visited every family in Virginia City, even those without children. I'll be at the schoolhouse tonight. Yep. And we may also have some trouble tonight. Maybe worse than there's been. Well, it's just a chance I'll have to take. Where's little Joe? Other side of the schoolhouse. Just in case Adam's three friends try something else. Not a bad idea. Why don't you keep your eyes open this side? Right. I'm sorry, Barbara. I understand. I still love my uncle. And I guess the truth is more important than my love for him. Well, I'm afraid I can't judge that. Maybe the truth will free him. Yeah, I can't judge that either. Adam. May I, uh, may I speak with you for a moment, please? All right, Colonel. Look, Adam, try to forget all the unpleasantness that's come up between us lately. Try to remember the years of friendship I've had with you and your family. At first, I, I asked you to give this thing up. Now I'm pleading with you, Colonel. because if you go through with what you're going to do, if you besmirch my name without proof, you will put yourself in a grave position. I will be forced to seek legal redress. I'll have to take that chance. Let me put it this way. I'm not pleading for myself. That may be hard for you to believe, knowing all I stand to lose. But I'm pleading for you, Adam. I'm pleading for your life. Sounds like a threat, Colonel. I don't mean it as a threat, but as a warning. Not in anger, but in friendship. I beg you. I'm sorry I can't. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? You all know what I've been trying to do here as a substitute teacher. But when I took the job, I decided to teach a little history about the territory and the men who made that history. And as I studied to bring this history into focus, I was opposed. I couldn't figure out why. But perhaps out of human stubbornness, this made me persist even more. I talked to a man who was part of our history. He told me of a surveying expedition in this territory by an army party of which he was a member. When I finally dug into this, I found the truth. The young surveyor moved a line on a map. Just a few inches, but it encompassed a hundred miles. An accomplice filed on this land. There was one hitch in their plan. A small band of Indians lived on the land and claimed it their own. In the night, the village was raided. Every Indian was killed and buried. The village was raised. From the timber and mines of this stolen land, with murder the price, 
two men laid the basis of their vast fortune. Records only hinted at this story. They were old, altered, destroyed, but nevertheless the story was true. Now it was not merely a question of a teacher's right to teach, but of telling or suppressing a truth. This truth could destroy two men whose names loom proudly in our history. And the man who names them is the man who has waited 30 years to do so. 30 years of fear until tonight. One man survived the massacre, a brave. dead. The proof is gone. Is it worth it? Was it worth it 30 years ago? No. Please, I have something to say to you. I was that man that surveyor that Adam was talking about. And that man was my partner. I did not participate in the extinction of that Indian village, but I kept silent when I did know about it. I profited from the land. Somehow I think in my heart I I always knew that one day I would be called into account. That day is here. And I will pay whatever you decide it must be. wrong. Maybe the truth costs too much. Yeah, sometimes it costs a great deal. But it's always less than the cost of hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> 